Good morning, and this is the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Welcome to the News at 10. I am Abdul Malik. Adieu. And I am Ifoma Ojinta. Thanks for joining us. The News at 10 is broadcast live from Abuja, and here are the headlines. Central Bank slashes bank charges in reverse guidelines with effect from January 1st, 2020. Federal government responds to U.S. allegations of religious intolerance, says United States fits on orchestrated and discredited narratives. Two of them, they have spent 13 years each. Presidential Committee on Correctional Reforms and Discretion grants 19 inmates freedom at the Kuche Correctional Facility. Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu beefs up security nationwide as correspondents report on futures of Christmas. Thanks for staying tuned. Now, the federal government has responded to allegations of severe violations of religious freedom, saying the tag stems from an orchestrated narrative that has long been discredited. In a statement from the Office of the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, the minister says Nigerians enjoy unfiltered freedom to practice their religion and blamed failed politicians and disgruntled element for latching on to religion as their triumph card, especially in the runoff to the last general elections to our President Mohamedou Mak. Bahari's administration on the El Zagzaki issue, which was referred to in the report by the U.S. government, the minister described it as purely criminal matter, which is being handled by a court of competent jurisdiction. The minister said, while the government welcomes constructive criticism from any quarter, it rejects any attempt to sow the seed of mistrust among the various religious groups in the country. In the meantime, the Buhari Media Organization has described the arrest of former Attorney General and Minister of Justice Mohamed Aduki by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on arrival from Dubai as an indication that there is no hiding place for politically exposed persons who have questions to answer on their activities while in office. In a statement, the group noted that Aduki's arrest by the EFCC would help shed light on issues surrounding the controversial granting of the oil prospecting license 245 to Shell and ENI during the Good Luck Jonathan administrative years. Now, the federal government is reviewing its strategies towards ensuring the sustenance of gains achieved so far in the National Social Investment Program, which the government identifies as having lifted close to 5 million Nigerians out of poverty. This is the reason for a one-day interaction between the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development with the state focal persons of the program, Olabo Diarewa reports. That is Sarah Aldo, one of the produce traders enjoying increased sales as a result of the federal government's National Social Investment Program, established in 2016 to reduce poverty and to ensure equitable distribution of resources to the vulnerable segments of the population. It has four pillars, the homegrown school feeding program, the conditional cash transfer program, the Empire Scheme, and the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, JEEP. This meeting in Abuja is looking at ways of improving the program's effectiveness. These aforementioned programs are some of Mr. President's strategy to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty the present administration from the onset made investments in our people, which is one of the key goals of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Many countries do not believe that uh, Nigeria will have that capacity to feed 10 million. But looking at the population and the commitment of the federal governments, this is a reality and we must uh, com I mean, commend the federal government for putting that also through. A key takeaway from the meeting is the need to improve communication channels between the states and federal officials on progress made so far in the National Social Investment Program. In Abuja, Labo, 
NCA News. The Central Bank of Nigeria has reviewed downward most charges and fees for banking services in a new guide to charges by banks, other financial and non-bank financial institutions with effect from January 1st, 2020, and calls on members of the public to acquaint themselves with the new rules. Director of Corporate Communications to the APES Bank, Isaac Okorafo explained some of the major highlights of the new guide released Sunday to include removal of card maintenance fee on all cards linked to current accounts, a maximum of one naira per thousand naira for customer-induced debit transactions to third parties and transfers or lodgements to the customer's account in other bank or current accounts only. Other prominent features include reduction in the amount payable for cash withdrawals from other banks, automated teller machines from 65 Naira to 35 Naira after the third withdrawal within one month, an advanced payment guarantee which is now pegged at maximum of 1% in the first year and 0.5% for subsequent years on contingent liabilities. The new guide stipulates a one-off charge of 1,000 Naira to the issuance of cards, irrespective of type, and no charge shall be required for prepaid card loading or unloading. Unstructured supplementary service data charges purchased with cash back will attract a charge of 100 Naira per 20,000 Naira, subject to cumulative 60,000 Naira daily withdrawal, while maintenance fee on cards linked to savings accounts has been reduced to a maximum of 50 Naira per quarter. Account maintenance fee will henceforth not be applicable to savings accounts, and the guide stipulates a penalty of 2 million Naira per infraction, or as may be determined by the CBN from time to time for financial institutions that breach any provision of the guide. Now to enforce and ensure the total compliance on the ban of import importation of rice by the federal government, the Nigerian Customs Service raided Mubi Market in Adamawa State and seized hundreds of bags of smuggled rice and arrested three people suspected to be involved in smuggling activities. Yusuf Jika reports. It is without doubt that President Muhammad Buhari banned the importation of foreign rice to encourage local rice production and take the pride in driving the economic and food security of the nation. Despite the ban, Mubi, a commercial nerve center of Adamawa State, still witnessed influx of smuggled rice in view of its proximity to neighboring Cameroon Republic. These, however, prompted the combined efforts of Nigerian Customs Service and Police Force to raid the market and made a seizure of smuggled rice and as well made arrest of three persons alleged to have been involved in the prohibited act. I will continue to do that so that this will serve as a clear warning to smugglers. Residents of Mubi bear their minds on the operation carried out by main and officers of the Nigerian Customs Service. That, what, that policy is good. So if we continue importing rice from other countries, automatically we are dying. Though it's understandable that the government has banned the importation of rice, but what, why is the custom coming into the market? What General Muhammad Bwari is doing, he's doing a very good job. In Yola, Yusuf Jika, NT News. Deliberate efforts are on to financially include rural Nigerians formally, as rural dwellers are encouraged to open and operate bank accounts into which social inclusion stipends are paid. Details with Kolo Mohammed on Business News. The year 2019 has been a year of innovation and inclusion in the national business segment. For the first time in a long while, the country has returned to the January to December budget timeline as after the submission of the 2020 appropriation bill by Mr. President in October, the National Assembly deliberated upon it and passed it. Now it has been signed into law by the President. Deliberate efforts are on to search formal financial inclusion in rural Nigeria. On its path, the federal government's social investment and inclusion encourages rural community dwellers to open and operate bank accounts into which stipends are paid. These include trader money and power, market money, conditional cash transfer 
and school feeding funds. This has infused the grassroots and the grass tops to create an avenue for sustainable interface at the community level. Stakeholders say more needs to be done if this success is to reach many more people. I sincerely want to believe that uh, the government of the day still needs to do more on that aspect. The financial institutions need to do more in terms of uh, carrying each and every one along in their own operations. Uh, uh, if you go to places like uh, the villages, there are certain places where you don't even see a sign of a bank. And as a result, such people may not really understand what it means to be part of the bank's operations. The week's activity on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Market opens today. And as always, NDA Business News will bring you closing figures subsequently. And those are the notes upon which we open our business reportage for this week. Be with you again soon. Many thanks, Kolo Mohammed. And if you're just joining us, this is the News at 10 and the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We cannot allow our rich heritage of faith in Jesus Christ to be lost because of our negative experiences. Plato State Governor Simon Lalong reminds Christians to ensure that the message of salvation should never be lost in the celebration of Christmas. And now let's begin this segment of the news on an innovative note. To ease the provision of consumables to troops in the northeast, the Nigerian Army has deployed a solar-powered mobile bakery. How does it work? Well, let's find out from defense correspondent Ismail Musa, who was at the Nigerian Army Command Engineering Depot, Kaduna, venue of the invention. Arms and troops motivation are among major factors responsible for the success of any military operation. To ensure easy and steady supply of consumables like bread, to boost the morale of troops in the ongoing counter-insurgency operations in the Northeast, the Nigerian Army developed this multipurpose mobile bakery. Dr. Ibrahim Soraju, the head of the Department of Mechatronic Engineering in Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, is the brain behind the innovation. All the bakeries in the field, in the northeast in particular, have been shut down or vandalized. So we decided to bring back into this research in collaboration with uh, the DICON and the CED to come up with uh, a unit that is mobile, that doesn't require any fixed structure, that can serve other purposes and provide the necessary things we require, particularly the bread and other pastries like uh, meat fry and any other thing that the troops would need as far baking is concerned. The machine with an independent mixer has two components, one powered by solar energy, while the other through a mobile gas cylinder. It can provide electricity in the field at night, and then troops can charge their communication radios and mobile phones as well as laptops while in the field. These and other innovations are geared towards the development of the nation's military industrial complex. This Panhard EML-60 had been modified. The modification is based on converting the air-cooled engine of 256 horsepower to water-cooled Toyota 290 horsepower. From the Nigerian Army Vehicle Manufacturing Company in Kaduna, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Let's turn attention to the past sector where the Nigerian Society of Engineers has observed that the inadequate commitment among owners of generation, distribution and transmission companies have compounded the crisis currently bedeviling Nigeria's past sector. President of the society, Adekunle Mukolu, affirmed this, among other observations, that the inadequate regulation and enforcement by the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission was also a major factor hampering past sector growth. 
the body recommended the prioritization of power supply for industrial use above domestic consumption. It also commended the federal government's presidential executive order five aimed at sustainable industrial growth and advocated the passage of the order into an act of parliament among other recommendations. Two, immediate implementation of cost reflective tariff structure from the review of multi-year tariff order by, by Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC. Four, creation of special purpose vehicle for improvement, expansion of electricity infrastructure and revenue, revenue collection from consumers. Strategies before, during, and after the festivities. In a statement, the Inspector General of Police calls for effective deployment of both human and material asset of the force in protecting the major highways, recreational centers, motor parks, and places of worship financial institutions and government and private infrastructures, amongst others. The IGP strongly warns police operatives, especially those detailed to man the highways to disease from all forms of misconduct and abuse of right of citizenry, as well as adhere strictly to the laid down rules, regulations and standard operating procedures of the force. The federal government says all returning migrants across the country will always be given proper reintegration for self-reliance. To this end, Libya returnees from Delta states have been provided with starter packs by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons after undergoing skills acquisition training in Asaba Delta states. Austin Edemodo reports. <laughs> Cross-session of Libya returnees taking turns to receive their certificates and starter packs after undergoing weeks of training in hairdressing and barbing. Some of the returnees, including Favor Jean, a mother of one, see the gesture as a great relief after a terrifying experience as a migrant in Libya. When I was in Libya, I regretted of, of going there because why the job there was a very terrible one. In the verb of me trying to cross to Europe, through the Mediterranean Sea, so we are deported back. Today, they are trying to empower us with uh, starter packs to start up our career again. I want to appreciate everything that they have given to us today. Everything, at least it's not been easy for supporting us, trying to make us live a responsible life. The Federal Commissioner National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Bashiru Mohammed, represented by Migration Officer Chinenye Mwabugu, says there will be constant monitoring and evaluation of the program. As part of the Commission's mandate to provide reliable solutions and reintegration assistance for our persons of concern, and President Mohammed Buhari's mandate to reach out to the citizens of Nigeria, the youth will know that. Nigeria is home and um, that they can make it here in Nigeria. Over 70 returnees from Libya of data state origin benefited from the readmission and reintegration exercise which is ongoing across the 36 states of the Federation. I'm Austin, a demo to NTA News. Now, the two Nigerians mistakenly sent to Bosnia refugee camp by the Croatia police are back home in the country with stories not so palatable on how they were treated. Let's join Uyemi Ajay for details. They drove again for about five, five, five four hours, hours and then in the night stopped, brought everybody down and told us to sign the paper and that was that written in their language, language uh, without translation. The story of Abia Uchena and Abo Kenneth Chinedu is not the case of youth seeking greener pastures outside the country but what can be described as victims of circumstance. They are computer science students who went to Croatia for a world inter-university competition where they lost at the second round. They decided to do some sightseeing before they leave the country as their visas were still valid when, unfortunately, they were apprehended by the country's police who insisted they were migrants from Bosnia where they were eventually transferred to and kept in a refugee camp. They said the you 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 came from, from Bosnia. Bosnia. I said you now said 
where is Bosnia? We are citizens of Nigeria. We came for a competition. We have never been we have in Bosnia. show them your passport? The passports were in our hostel. It took the intervention of the Nigerian government through the Nigerian High Commissioner to Budapest and the Chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission for them to be released and returned to Nigeria. We have to call the people in charge and tell them our stories. Their ordeal, however, is considered a lesson to many, especially the youths who see other countries as safe haven for a promising future, as against building Nigeria to the level they desire. That no matter what the challenges are in Nigeria, home is home. Home is where you are a first class citizen. Abia Uchina and Abo Kenneth Chinedu are just fortunate to have made it back to the country safely, but many are believed to still be out there in several countries with similar experiences, begging for their stories to be heard. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NT News. Now, the wind of Christmas is fast blowing across the world and back home, Nigerians are engaged in the routine of shopping and planning to visit places of interest and tourist sites. Ironically, the festive period is also a time when hoodlums sometimes take advantage of celebrations like these to perpetrate crimes. Indeed, informer, and to mitigate this and ensure a peaceful U-tide for citizens, security is usually beefed up by authorities. Our correspondent Lydia Sampson in this special report says security operators are not just talking tough, but are deploying crack squad to secure the country. Threats to safety and security come in many forms, ranging from deliberate violence to accidental injury. Violence and injury at their most extreme threaten life itself. In other cases, they reduce the quality of life of victims and often of those close to them. Abbas Essien Desai, a journalist and father of two, is looking forward to a hit free Christmas and New Year celebration across Nigeria. We call him with nostalgia that once upon a time, Nigerians were their brother's keepers. Simply put, neighbors got each other's back. Many years back, we saw that Mandala bombing even in the house of God on a Christmas day. That also means that um, in also going to church, you must also consider the security for your family. Uh, but um, in the past two, three, four years, we have also seen government respond to the challenges. Abbas is not alone. During Christmas period and holidays, people are often distracted because they are involved most of the time out shopping or celebrating. And these two situations create some level of distraction. And quite often, people are carrying large sums of cash and expensive gifts. Criminals know this, and they are all the time looking out to take advantage of people who are distracted or people who have lowered their guard. This, security experts say, has contributed to strange bedfellows, infiltrating society, and sometimes allowing people get away with all sorts of crimes against humanity. So we know, for instance, that kidnapping, um, highway robbery, let me start from that one, and associated with that is kidnapping. Uh, there are also other, um, you know, even safety elements, accidents as an example. All of that, unfortunately, will not go away during the Christmas. So first things first, uh, any uh, person celebrating Christmas, traveling for Christmas, should ask himself a uh, couple of questions. His individual security, the community of the, the security of the location where he is, the security of the location where he's going to. Security operative says there will be no sacred cow as criminality will be met with stiff penalties. We believe in high visibility as a form of deterrence and therefore uh, we have deployed to almost every nook and corner. Uh, there are areas where we are covering with food patrols. Um, now, over, our, our operation this time is all overt and covered, both what you see and the ones you don't see. Don't forget you and I also have a role to play because security is everyone's business. And as you celebrate, security experts have advised that you look out for suspicious character so that we work together to ensure an enjoyable and peaceful celebration. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News.
I see Lydia is already in the mood for the festivities. And from Plateau comes this report that Governor Simon Lelong is nudging Christians to ensure that the message of salvation is never to be lost in this celebration as people engage in many activities to commemorate the season. Dennis Adegunloe gives us details. Governor Simon Lalong was speaking at the 2019 Christmas and Carols of Nine Lessons organized by the Government House Chapel in Rayfield Joss. The governor urged the citizens of Plateau State to use the occasion to demonstrate love to one another and reflect on the level of peace being enjoyed currently, which needs to be deepened. We cannot allow our rich heritage of faith in Jesus Christ to be lost because of our negative experiences. We should remember that many have been attracted to our state because of the fruit of the spirit they see in us, which makes us loving, patient, peaceful, kind, and joyful. It will be more exciting if the person we choose to show love is, is someone who is either undeserving of it or is not expecting it. Other speakers at the event, including the Commander Operation Safe Haven, Major General Augustine Agundu, also called on the people to avoid engaging in acts of celebration that negate the whole essence of Christmas, which is the redemption of mankind. I also use occasion to appeal to us all to be at peace with everybody, because our Lord Jesus Christ preached peace, practice peace, and live peace. In fact, he was called a man of peace. We all know that the scriptures ask us to number our days so that we might act, put some wisdom in what we are doing. And this is the news at 10 and 80 News 24, reaching live from Abuja, the nation's capital. Brick beckons when we come back, there will be more news to stay tuned. the world, there are days set aside to celebrate music as a whole. 